Hey guys, so let's talk about blood cancers. Um, these can sometimes be a little overwhelming and they can be a little confusing. So hopefully we can break them down a little bit um, so they don't seem so confusing. And again, if you are in adult course, turn away now. Don't watch this, don't confuse yourself. This is for last semester complex students. So what is leukemia? So we have three, I should say, we have three blood disorders. We have leukemia, lymphomas, and multiple myeloma. So what is leukemia? And this is something that is really confusing because you know most people think leukemia, they're really like immunocompromised, high risk for infection, and that's true. But most people assume it's because they are like missing or don't have enough blood cells. But the problem with leukemia is there's a crowding of blood cells. There is too many white blood cells um, uh, to, or not even just white blood cells, there's too many blood cells in general that are proliferating. Um, what happens in this process is there's um, normal bone marrow cells like, you know, um, are replaced with baby blood cells. So think you have pretty much, imagine a world where there's a whole bunch of babies without parents. You know, like there would be a lot of, um, you know, things that we're not to be cared for. They can't grow up into the beautiful immune cell that they're supposed to be. Um, and so effectively there's just this proliferation of a lot of abnormal, um, not fully grown cells. Um, and they take the space of cells that um, are functioning. So one, there's not enough room for, um, uh, what do you call it, other cells to be there. And so it crowds the um, space for the other cells. But two, there's just not a, enough of the cells that um, we need to actually function. So we're missing on that function. So this patient can come in very pale, anemic, fatigued, weak, those signs of anemia, low hemoglobin. They can have thrombocytopenia or low platelets. And so we really wanna be looking for signs of easy bleeding or bruising. Um, and they can also have leuco, or they also will have leukocytosis. And so this is, um, you know, too many white blood cells. And that might be like, well, wait, what? I thought you said they had an infection problem. But remember, they have too many white blood cells, but they're not grown blood cells. So they have a very weak immune system, even though they have a lot of cells, because they don't have the cells that are grown that they need to actually fight that infection. They might also complain of bone pain or um, have enlargement of their spleen or liver. Um, we're usually gonna do a di uh, diagnostics uh, with a peripheral blood smear, which is kind of like these pictures over here where you get to see, see these big purple things. Um, these are all um, you know, accumulation of these blood cells taking up space. Um, and then we can also possibly do a bone marrow aspiration analysis. So most people get overwhelmed with these types of leukemia. So hopefully I can break this down. So effectively what I want you to think of is I want you to think of um, that there, you know, what differentiates the four types of leukemia is the speed of how rapid it happens and then the type of cell. And so, you know, and you don't need to go in depth what's a myelocyte versus a lymphocyte. If you do need to know that in depth, I'd be a little worried, but um, it's, it, it's kind of confusing. I had to look at stuff, um, you know, for a while. If you're wondering what took so long to get some of these PowerPoints up, keep in mind that these are not my topics of choice. And I have to learn these topics. You know, these are not stuff that I know in depth or that I see on a day-to-day -day basis in depth. So um, if it makes you feel better, trust me, it's hard to learn some of this stuff. It's definitely complicated, but hopefully this can break it down. Um, so, you know, when we're looking at leukemia, um, we're looking at, is it fast or slow? What's the speed? And is it myelocytes or lymphocytes? And really just the difference there, if you're like one of those people that's like, okay, I know you say I don't need to know, but I wanna know, cause I'm sure there's gonna be a question about it. Really, it comes down to the fact is that um, kind of think of these as like the precursor to all of your immune cells and that myelocytes, you just have certain options of what you can change into what kind of cells like red blood cells, things like that. And lymphocytes, you're more um, like immune cells, like stuff like white blood cells and stuff like that. Um, but again, it's pretty much just like, who are you predestined to be? So there's all these like, you know, precursors that say like, okay, if you're a myelocyte, you can turn into one of these type of cells. And then your body decides based on what it needs. Like, so let's say there's a time, hey, it's like, hey, I need more platelets. It's going to take some of those myelocytes and be like, hey, myelocytes, I need more platelets. I need you to, to mutate into a platelet. And so it creates more based on what your body needs. So it's kind of like a precursor to all of your cells. Um, <clears throat> So again, going back to the simple thing. So if that confused you, don't stress about it. I don't think you need to know that in depth. Um, but you know, effectively with these types of cancers, it's either um, these types of leukemia, I should say, it's either it comes on really rapidly. So I told you this is a cell proliferation or a, cr a cloud. Uh, I can talk crowding 
of your, um, uh, what do you call it, in your bone marrow. And so um, with this crowding in your bone marrow, it can either come on super fast. So in other words, um, like, you know, all of a sudden, um, you know, um, your, your uh, bone marrow is going to be overwhelmed with all these cells, um, or it can be slow. So it's like it's slowly proliferating or taking over, like the young um, immature cells are taking over. Um, and then again, it can either be myelocytes or lymphocytes. So that's why there's four types. You're either acute and fast with myelocytes or chronic and slow with myelocytes. You're acute and fast with lymphocytes or chronic and slow with lymphocytes. And that's all the different types of leukemia here. So AML, it's acute, fast onset with those myelocytes um, affecting, sorry, I should say it's affecting the myelocytes. Um, and um, it's more most common in older patients. I try to put some differentiations here to also help further differentiate these. Um, then there's ALL, which is acute and fast, um, but from lymphocytes. And this is the most common type of leukemia in children. Um, and something else that's a little different about it is it can cause um, CNS or nervous system manifestations. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there's the chronic ones. There's CML, which is chronic and slow for myelocytes. Um, and what it has is it's kind of characterized by um, there's like these chronic stable phase followed by an acute phase or a blastic phase where there's all of a sudden blast cells are baby cells. Um, and so all of a sudden there's all these baby cells there. So, um, and the, one of the things that, you know, I've heard said that this is something that's tested a lot, like especially on NCLEX is like which one's related to the Philadelphia chromosome. And so CML is the one associated with the Philadelphia chromosome. In other words, if you have a Philadelphia chromosome, you have a higher chance of getting CML. And then there's also CLL. This is the most common type of leukemia. Um, and it's also associated with lymph node enlargement, which, you know, actually with their lymph node enlargement, they can end up having um, other complications. Um, like, you know, if I have lymph node enlargement, um, it could lead to like, you know, um, pressure on my nerves, pressure on other organs around the lymph nodes and stuff like that as well. So overall treatment and management for leukemia is going to involve chemotherapy, um, radiation and biological therapies, leukophoresis, which is literally taking out some of those extra white blood cells that are um, and other um, cells that are getting in the way, um, uh, you know, psychosocial support and trying to prevent complications is big, you know, complications from all those low blood cells like anemia replacing the missing blood cells, um, trying to um, provide adequate oxygenation for the um, uh, thrombocytopenia, making sure that I'm um, preventing bleeding and trauma in these patients, and then preventing infections as a whole, and just managing their symptoms. And I also have here, I mean, ideally, the, the way we would love to do um, a bone marrow transplant for these patients, but they're very hard to come by. So if you haven't already, you know, when I was in nursing school, ages ago, um, I signed up to be a donor. I've never been called about it, but I'm hoping one day that I might be able to um, be, a tra uh, be a donor for someone who really needs that bone marrow transplant and definitely recommend you do too. I promise they didn't pay me to say anything. <laughs> so let's talk about the difference between leukemia and lymphoma. So um, leukemias are a little less common and they're more common in children. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's a, just, uh, it's a malignancy in the like bone marrow. Um, and it's all about the white blood cells. Whereas lymphomas, it's more older adults, it's more common in general. It's involving the lymphatic tissue. Um, so lymphatic organs and stuff like that as well. And then um, it's um, involving lymph, lymph cells versus the white blood cells or lymph, uh, lymphatic cells. So um, too many lymphocytes, just like in, um, we talked about, you know, there's myelocytes and lymphocytes. So there's too many lymphocytes, but lymphoma is in the immune system problem where leukemia is a bone marrow problem. And there's two types of lymphoma. There's Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's. So Hodgkin's is less common. And if you ever see the words like, you know, that there's Reed Sternberg cells present, think Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, it's most common, and it's kind of like a weird gap here. It's like it's common in age 15 to 30, and then after age 55 um, is when people usually get it. And again, it's not very common, but for those that get it, those are the age ranges that usually get it. Um, it's related to possibly a history of having um, a virus like the Epstein-Barr virus or HIV, and also can be related to genetics or exposure to toxins. Uh, toxins. <laughs> um, uh, it usually starts in the cervical lymph nodes, in the neck here in the the front um, is where uh, most commonly it starts. 
And, you know, when patients get Hodgkin's lymphoma, they have kind of a gradual onset and they have the, a, a movable and non-tender enlargement on their lymph nodes. Again, usually the cervical lymph nodes. Um, and they can have B symptoms, which are, you know, fever, weight loss, night sweats. And if they have those, it is considered a worse prognosis. Um, they can also just be generally weak, tired. Um, they can have alcohol-induced pain, which means when they drink alcohol that they have pain um, in their um, uh, cancer site. And it doesn't really make sense. Um, it's hard to, um, research hasn't quite supported exactly why this happens, but I found it interesting in your book that talked about that. It can also um, cause just generally itchy skin. Um, so we're going to do a lymph node biopsy, do a blood smear, kind of see what their cells are looking like, and maybe a PET scan or a CT scan. Um, they have pretty standard um, cancer treatments, chemo, radiation. We're going to be monitoring for occurrence and spreading of this. We're going to do fertility counseling for these patients, um, psychosocial support, pain management. Um, as a whole, just want to make sure these patients have their needs met. So then there's non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So um, again, a lot of the same risk factors, genetics, environment, infections, um, being immunoficient or having not a um, strong immune system. Um, it's classified by what type of cell they're in. So B cell, T cell, NK cell, um, you know, depending on um, what immune cell that it's present in. Um, B cell is the most aggressive type. So if you have a patient with that, kind of just being aware that that's definitely um, a type that's much more aggressive. Again, they're going to have painless lymph node enlargement, just like Hodgkin's lymphoma. But what's going to make non-Hodgkin's different is one, they don't have the reed sternberg cells. Then two, um, they usually have symptoms from other organs. So usually by the time we find non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's usually spread somewhere else. So they're going to have enlargement um, uh, masses and things other places. So hepatomegaly, neurological changes, things like that. They also can have the B symptoms as well, just like Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, we're going to do a biopsy and then also, um, you know, of the actual lymph nodes and then also look for spread somewhere else. So maybe a lumbar puncture or if we think like there's gastrointestinal involvement, we might do a barium enema. Overall management is going to be pretty much the same. Chemotherapy, biotherapy, radiation. We may do some topical therapies. Uh, managing pain is going to be key uh, for these patients, trying to prevent complications. I really need to monitor that organ function wherever the organ that's affected um, that it's spread to and then provide psychosocial support for these patients as well. So last but not least, let's talk about multiple myeloma. So this is also too many blood cells are crowding. Um, and this, is, um, this happens in the bone marrow again. But the difference between multiple myeloma and leukemia is that this, um, this type of cancer actually leads to bone destruction or bone breakdown. So this is more common in male gender, African-American ethnicity, um, ages like 65 to 74, being exposed to chemicals or viruses. So it's slow and insidious, and usually the, um, the, some of the symptoms they might have is skeletal pain. They can have signs and symptoms of osteoporosis. And if you remember, you know, osteoporosis is that loss of bone density. So they can also have a high propensity for fractures um, because the bone is getting broken down and bone is being disrupted. They can have hypercalcemia. If you remember treatment um, you know, or management of hypercalcemia, I'm really going to be worried about kidney stones and other things. So I also need to monitor their kidneys closely for failure. They can also have, um, you know, um, low blood cells because, again, um, the, uh, you know, the cancer is taking over and overwhelming the bone marrow. So anemia, thrombocytopenia, neutropenia, so managing those things. Um, I'm going to do diagnostics like MRI, PET scans, CT scans. I'm probably going to do chemistry to check on that calcium level, kidney function testing. And um, there's also a lab called an M protein that I may find in their blood and their urine. So sadly for multiple myeloma, it's usually not curative treatment. Usually I'm just managing and preventing complications and decreasing their symptoms. So they may get steroids, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or targeted therapy. Um, I'm going to be doing pain management. I'm going to provide to, uh, try to provide for safety and prevent fractures in this patient. Um, to help support their bone um, density, I'm going to maybe give them bisphosphonates, um, just like in osteoporosis. Uh, and then I really want to treat that hypercalcemia. So ambulation, hydration, um, and really trying to um, encourage um, good bone and kidney health is going to be key for these patients. Um, and then providing lots of psychosocial support because um, it's definitely hard to get an outcome where you have a cancer that's maybe that we can make it better, but we can never cure it. 
so yeah, so those are blood cancers um, in a nutshell. I hope that that helped and that you feel more confident going into um, you know these cancers now. Yeah, see you next time.